When Hardy Kim gave his last sermon at Fourth Pres before heading off to his pastorship at Sunnydale Presbyterian in California, he, he told us that Fourth would need to do a lot of work to live down its racist past, starting with our principal benefactor, Cyrus McCormick, who funded both North Presbyterian and Fourth Presbyterian. Hardy said Cyrus McCormick was a racist and a slave owner. Later, Hardy told us in a committee meeting that he got an angry phone call after giving that sermon from a member of the McCormick family. Hardy didn't have to tell me that because that member of the McCormick family was my house guest at the time. He wasn't even at the service, but I was. Welcome, welcome to Sunday Coffee Hour. I'm Stanley Smith at Sunday Coffee Hour. We talk about everything and nothing. This week, we talked about how, how to define the Antichrist, the miracle of Fatima, dying from arthritis, and being dead on arrival. Also, how when, when we see the other as enemy, we immediately put everyone into the scarcity model. The readings at Washington National Cathedral were from Exodus. Everything that the Lord has spoken we will do. And from Romans, rarely will anyone die for a righteous person, though perhaps for a good person sometimes. But God proves his love through Christ, who died for those of us who are neither good nor righteous. The gospel was uh, about not taking the road leading to the Gentiles and not entering the Sumerian town, but go rather instead to the lost sheep of your own kind. The sermon at Washington National Cathedral was by Reverend and Senator Ralphio Warnock from Georgia. He preached about making the rough places plain and smoothing out everything so we can experience equity in this country. He explained that our democracy is broken and unjust because people can't get what they want. Mr. Warnock disparaged those who came before him in the Senate and said he, he occupies a seat that was once held by a staunch segregationist. And his office building is in a building named after another racist from Georgia. Mr. Warnock said, we see resistance in this country to equity because it means that someone is going to have to give up some of what they have. The, the word woke started out as a word used by Black people to express the idea that the government was out to get them. Later, the word was appropriated by white people to mean that we're the good white people. When one group feels subjugated to existing in the scarcity model by another group, it's going to get wonky. While we've all been trying to figure out who's been discriminated against and by whom, we probably should have just simply joined our Black friends in exploring the idea further that the government is out to get us. All the while, we've been focused on looking at each other as enemy, along with Fox News and the MAGA movement. And in the meantime, the government has just gone skippity doo da down its merry way. We're all discriminated against now, and there's, there is an equity in that. And woke, well, I guess we're, we're all woke now. Mr. Warnock's message was in honor of the end of slavery, and that, that was a form of liberation. There's a, there's a justice in that. But God's love is about grace. None of us deserve it. It's the ultimate form of discrimination, and there's nothing equitable about it. At St. James, a sermon was by Stephen Belke about how the harvest is great and the workers are few. Stephen talked about a recent interfaith leadership lunch he attended with bishops and leaders of the Jewish, Muslim, and Christian faith traditions. The organizer of the, of the event said that Chicago has always been a, a strong, has always had a strong network of working together through interfaith, unlike other cities, especially in New York. He said that probably has more to do, um, we had less to do with the fact that they're inter interested in interfaith and more to do with the fact that they're simply New Yorkers. 
Stephen, apologize for the generalization because none of us want to be profiled, yet we all have a temperament, our character, and our personality that set us apart individually, ethnically, and culturally. My friend Benet Davis said his Black friends always used to ask him, why are you going to that fancy white church? Are you, are you trying to be white? I'm not sure how Benet answered those people, but he always told me that he believed in working hard and being the best he could be, which used to be called values. Benny didn't see the other as the reason for his failure or success, and he never seemed to be the victim of the scarcity model because of it. We learned this Sunday that Marsha Heiser died. She headed back to Wyoming a short while ago to be with her family to enter into hospice. I'm, I'm not sure which was more troubling for Marsha, the idea of dying or spending her final days with her Trump loving family in Wyoming. Mr. Warnock cited Fox News a, a couple of times during his sermon. Fox News and Trump are euphemisms for the other, and that just keeps us locked in the scarcity model. I, I have a friend who's been going through a, a very bad, a very rough time, his pain and suffering for both her and her son. Until recently, it occurred to her, what purpose is the pain and suffering serving? In the process, she felt, her, felt herself moving from hope to resolve. And she experienced in the process justification by faith. I never told Marcia that when she first came to Fourth Church, I, and I immediately invited her to be on the Labyrinth Committee, that I got uh, a lot of pushback and actually got called out on the carpet for inviting Marcia onto the committee because Marcia was not a not technically a member at the time, and clergy said because of that, she couldn't serve. Uh, I never mentioned it to Marsha, and I simply found a way to, to uh, sidestep the entire issue, and um, Marsha never was had to experience the disappointment of knowing that she was disinvited by the very clergy that she adored. None of us want to be discriminated against, and none of us want to get an angry phone call from a member of the McCormick family. The best thing that Mr. Warnock said in his sermon is when he quoted Dr. Martin Luther King, who said that the moral arc of history always bends toward justice. And sometimes it is just a phone call away. If you would like to join us at Sunday Coffee Hour, Sunday Coffee Hour is every Sunday at 12 noon Central Time on Zoom. I will include my email in the description of this video. I'll be happy to send you an invitation. And I look forward to seeing you very, very soon.